Hey everybody, welcome back to Sunday Tea Book. Mm -hmm. We are doing episode 17. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm so, uh, I don't know, I'm really getting in the rhythm now after so much consistency. I super, super look forward to this time. So welcome everybody and uh, episode 17, here we come. Mm -hmm. We're going to brew some, uh, it's a steam Chinese steam green tea mm. uh, from Guizhou province. Okay, uh, you can see it's the little... Hello, Annabelle on, on uh, Instagram. Needle is a shape, it's uh, just a mm. uh, butt, early pluck butt before nice. chimney. I'm super thirsty, so I'm looking forward to that. Let us know what you guys are brewing out there. We're super interested to hear what you're brewing. And I will give you a little rundown about what is Sunday Tea Book for those of you that are new to the situation. So this is our weekly get together where we drink some tea and we look at books, articles, or papers that are hard to access or impossible to access in the West, either written entirely in Chinese or maybe the translation is a little bit dubious. So we go over them and we, um, we break them down for you and we do the translation live. So for those of you on Instagram, I'm gonna, we're gonna pop over to YouTube in a few minutes. I bring up the, uh, the original document on the screen, we look at it, I read it out, I give you my impressions of the uh, document and then uh, Jen, make sure we didn't miss anything. Make sure you chip in with your comments and questions. Um, sometimes we struggle for words, so really we found that you guys have been super helpful with uh, shooting out uh, words that help us, uh, you know, translate some of the more difficult concepts. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things I like to say when we start this up is going over the translation live might seem like, well, why don't you just give us the finished product, the finished book, uh, nicely translated. Mm -hmm. And that's great. And it is available on our website in the link down in the description on the YouTube side. We do have that ready for you. You can pull it up and read along as we go. But um, what I found over the last uh, over the last several years working with Jen and getting into the details, I've really learned a lot about Chinese tea and tea culture by actually immersing in this. So we thought, let's share that with you guys and do that together. Absolutely. Feel free to have a smell. Oh, the, yeah. the, the leaf is so sweet, like uh, sweet uh, the raw mm. corn, but the sweetness of the juice when you pop the... Uh, kernel. Kernel. hundred percent right. when you said that. Right? That's so pleasant. Just so, sweet corn, yeah. Mm. Right. Uh, we're going to continue on China Tea Book by my mom, Jian Li Wu. Uh, and uh, today's session is all about uh, some green teas. You might saw that in our Instagram uh, stories, kind of a mini preview of uh, the teas we're going to talk about. This is a great book uh, to introduce people mm. to Chinese tea or to help those who are quite familiar with the Chinese tea but uh, need a little bit of organized to put uh, different knowledges in its own space. Uh, and this book help us. Uh, you and me get on the same page yeah. because there are, as Phil mentioned, there are many translation uh, Confusing confusions terms. or yeah. misunderstandings. And hopefully when we go through these books, we are on the same page with certain terms and names. And uh, it will be really helpful for our future translation work together. Excellent. Yeah. So as Jim was mentioning, or I'm not sure if you mentioned, but China Tea written by Jian Li Wu is already translated, but the translation is a little bit like, it's sometimes hard to understand, sometimes it's okay, like it goes through different phases. So what, we're what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it up on the screen. So as I said, for the Instagram folks, be sure to pop over to our YouTube channel. I'm gonna read it over and give you my impressions and then Jen's gonna come back. And if we missed anything, she's gonna make sure we didn't miss it. If anything was actually, sometimes you find out that the way it's translated, you get the wrong impression. And so she'll straighten those out. I think it would be really fun for those of you who are able to, down in the description of the YouTube is the finished translation. So you can actually follow along and compare the finished one with the book and everything. Mm -hmm. That might give you some interesting questions. Maybe we didn't get something that kind of piques your curiosity and it's not quite answered there. So finally, if you're new to our channel, please click that subscribe button. Oh, that's a thumbs up. You can do that too. <laughs> Put the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll know whenever we post uh, whenever we go live or post a new video, we do vlogs, we do how to brew, we do everything to do with Chinese tea and tea culture. Yeah. So Instagram, I'm going to say goodbye and we're going to head on over to YouTube land. So bye bye. See you on the other side. And thanks for joining our short Instagram intro. Right. And Josh is here on YouTube. Hello, Josh. Happy Sunday. And Anita is also there. What are the teas you guys are drinking? Today mm. I'm using a 
Okay, let me get you the fancy view. Can you please? Yes, coming up right away. Right. So today I'm just to simplify, brew a little teapot. I, I guess it's a slightly smaller than Western teapot. Just give you a size yeah, reference. It's a small Western teapot. Okay, okay. Yep. And uh, you know, it's a patent glass, so we can look at the leaves with a little bit artistic view, I would say. Mm, very pretty. So put some leaves and I actually brew directly from the hot, hot thermos. Mm -hmm. It's not thermos, how do you call it? Water boiler? Yeah, pretty so much just, uh, yeah, straight boiling water. Yeah, um, boiling water yep. uh, to 12. Now it's a set at a 208 and that's what I'm gonna just keep refilling. That corn aroma that we got off the dry leaf mm -hmm. really, really like evident, right? Right. It's still there, but more subtle in the liquor. With some vegetal hen. Mm-hmm. Mm, really fresh liquor. Mm. Josh said he's still <laughs> trying to decide. Now take your time, take your time. So we're gonna talk about Taiping Hou Kui, Xinyang Mao Jian, Lushan Yun Wu, and Wu Yuan Min Mei today. So if any of you haven't decided the tea and you happen to have one of these teas, mm. feel free to brew some up. Yeah, toss those in the pot. Mm. But of course, and you can always brew whatever you like or... Yes, and hello to Anita. I don't, rec I don't recognize the name, so welcome. And if you mm -hmm. have been here before and I missed it, I apologize in advance. And I'm going to pull up the book and we'll get started. Yes. Oh, this is so refreshing though. Right? Okay. Wow. Regardless of how much I hydrate, I find that, uh, let's bring us up in the corner there. Okay. I find that I'm always a little bit dry just before we get started because I think I get a little nervous. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Here we go. So there is the cover of the book uh, that we've been reviewing, China Tea by Jian Li Wu. And we have been making our way through, uh, we're making great progress, mm -hmm. making our way through the green tea section here. And we are down, as Jen said, into these four teas here. So if you got one of them, throw them in the pot and we'll get started right away with Taiping Ho Kui. All right. Taiping Ho Kui has a fame that Ho Kui's both sides are sharp without losing curling up and edge curling. There are Ho Kui, Kui Jian, and Jian tea, three kinds. Among them, Ho Kui is the best. The leaves are pale and green with little red in it, which is called red silk thread. While tasting, you can feel its special charm, first brewing on fragrance, second brewing on strong taste, and remaining the elegant fragrance after being brewed many times. So for this one, I took a little bit of a different approach because these sections are kind of short and sweet. Mm -hmm. I just want to kind of review it. I think it was understandable, but rather than leave it at that, I want to give you my, I have my notes here, so I'm going to give you what I got out of it. So basically in the beginning, they're characteristically flat and thin and you don't want them to curl, curl. That's what I got out of that. And there are three grades, Ho Kui, Kui Jian, and Jian, um, which Ho Kui is the best. I think that was pretty clear. The leaves are pale green with tiny red veins. I think that's, although that may be strange for some people, I don't think, I've only ever seen that in Ho Kui. I've never seen that in any other tea. It's very unique, um, but that seems accurate and right. And then the ending was a bit weird. The first, uh, the, the first brew highlights the fragrance pretty straight. The second, the strong taste. I, if I'm just reading this and I don't know Ho Kui, I feel like, oh, that's a bold tea. But I'm cheating a little bit. I know Ho Kui, especially good Ho Kui. I feel like strong is strongly the wrong word for that particular translation. And the elegance fragrance is long lingering. The ending is kind of just trails off like that. Mm. The reason I didn't jump in or anything is because I think while you're going through this, I think it's kind of a good that we do this separate because of this session, interestingly, mm. has a lot of tea turn in it. That's why in terms of the translation, you feel like mm. it doesn't even make a good sentence or super like a chop chop little section. Yes, yes, it's very choppy. put together as a sentence. Yes. So I just want to explain why. It's because there's a lot of tea turns and tea 
non. How should I say? T nomenclature. Wait, right? What, what does that mean? Like specific T namings and specific words used、mm. that take on a new meaning when applied to T that might mean something else in regular everyday use. Something similar to that, except there's no everyday use of those. Oh, and then it's specific T nomenclature. Yeah. Yes, with a lot of quotes in the Chinese、uh, written, there's a quote is a known way of describing or known、sure. characteristic of this T. So those、yeah. are in quotes, and、uh, in English it, there's no quotes, so it's just. Uh, Uh, the translation.、Uh, I think just before we dive、okay. into the details here, just to ex- to back up from that concept a bit for you guys out there, this is a really important thing to consider when you're reading and learning about T that that can happen a lot. And the worst is when everything makes sense, but it's but it's wrong,、um, and it does happen. So just keep that in mind if you're reading about Chinese T something in English that it could have. Something could be kind of weird. There's not much you can do about it, and it's hard to detect.、Mm. But the nomenclature can be really twisted sometimes. Right. If that makes sense. Okay. So let's dive in the keywords.、Uh, and I think it's kind of、uh, important. Important. Like I'd like to at least、uh, to share those、uh, T terms with you guys, I, which I think is the kind of the key or、uh, one of the one of the reason we're doing this. Oh yeah. Right. Hundred percent. So.、Uh, It talks about the shape in the first sentence. It talks about the shapes of a whole quay. Almost grab my teacup to to highlight. <laughs> uh, so uh, that was a, because whole quay has a saying. Okay, in the saying, it's like a little poem. Like it rhymes, right? Whole quay, two sides, 不散不翘不卷边 So、ah, can you feel the rhyme? Of、there? course, yeah.、Well, there's a little rhyme, but and that's that's, a, that's the part about its shape. Its shape、oh, means it's a pointy, like a, it's a pointy at the both ends, like a,、mm-hmm. with the leaf of a whole quay, and it doesn't fall apart. Like you cannot just see, oh, this is the leaf, this is the bud on the plug. It's all intertwined and it's tight. And oh, it's, that's、uh, what they mean by tight. They use the word tight, I think, in here. Without losing.、Oh, no. Right. Right. I don't know. Does that make sense? No. Yeah. Like it without、so、becoming、loose. loose. Like、um, they、yeah. stay bound together.、They're、bound together.、Mm. Uh, not curling means. Uh, uh, hmm. Here. Paper. Yeah. I think paper might be.、Uh, sorry. Let me look. Paper might be a good demonstration. If this is a one piece of whole quay, right? Like a leaf. Like a leaf. So it's not curled. So the edge is not curled. Okay,、mm-hmm. that not curled and、uh, not bent, which means the whole leaf is bent.、Right. I guess one is horizontal bent, one is、yep. vertical bent. Absolutely, band. yeah. Yeah, so that's the shape of a a whole quay, especially a good whole quay. And、uh, there are three types named whole quay, quay jian, and jian cha. Right. Oh, I don't know if we mentioned that. If you want to see the final translation, is in the the、mm. description. The link is in the description box. Yeah. So those opinion would be pretty handy if you could just yes refer to that. Yeah. So there are three kind of kinds, and kind of in terms of the uh the 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 grades, kind of a whole quay is the best, then quay jian, then jian cha, three types. Okay. There is a minor mistake in the translation, which talks about the leaves of a whole quay is a pale green. No, it's a, a dark green. It's the opposite.、Oh, it's not、geez. pale green. It's a dark green.、Mm-hmm. Um, it's a translation mistake in Chinese, but it's tricky because this w- specific character here, if you can hold it, tongue. Okay, it can mean、okay. pale. Yeah. When using with white or other colors, when using with green, it means deep. So this word, <laughs> this character by itself, can mean deep or pale. I bet school but, kids hate that word. It's like a trap. Yes. It's like pale when with white, but with green, no dark. Something like that. Okay, so it's a deep、How、green、rude. and even color, with a little.、Um, so little red in it. The red is in the vein. I had a thought about this. Right. This is so in, like I've never. We had.、Uh, I don't know. We had a. I want to find those pictures of Taiping Hongkui. I never saw one so beautiful、mm. like that one. So I don't know where. I think that, it's somewhere. Yeah, we'll. I don't know if we can find it, but it's 
it's almost hard to believe if we just describe and it. you can see the veins very clearly and it's really thin yeah with a really tinge thin. of red so thin you hold that to the light you kind of it's almost translucent green with these red like uh veins it's, it's not red it's a green just with some red yeah the, the red veins red vein yes. no, no no it wasn't fully red oh. it was the vein is green with a red tinge of that ah, ah. especially compared to the rest of the leaves mm. it's just right. a little bit that My it wouldn't it, no it wouldn't right. be full red it's right, a, right. no you don't want that it's super beautiful though yes and uh, and here it said it's called a red silk thread mm. so that's another uh kind of a tea term when we talk about the typing Hokui Hong Si Xian. That's its a character. And the last part it talk about the first brewing, second brewing and the last brewing. And uh, it says uh, first brewing on fragrance. Mm -hmm. Again this is a this section is another tea term which is a Tou Pao Gao Xiang, Er Pao Wei Nong, San Pao Si Pao Yu Xiang Yu Cun. It also has a little bit of like a, a rhythm. rhythmic, mm. yeah, rhythmic yeah. kind yeah. of a. It's like stuff. a saying almost, like a little. Yes, yes. Why you learn tea? Saying. That kind of a thing. Right. Yeah, those are like a. Um, Let us know if you love those sayings. I happen to. There's all kinds of little sayings. White tea has some. Yes. All these teas. These are awesome. Let right. me know in the comments if you love those too. <laughs> yes. So the first brew is a high. We call that a Gao Xiang high in fragrance. Which doesn't mean strong or really stuff. It means it's bright. the The profile of that aroma is high. Mm. It's more um, uh, high, light. almost meaning majestic, right? Not like powerful, not overwhelming. Right? Yeah, not strong. Mm. It's just almost like a, uh, it's a very uh, diffuser, a diffuser, diffusible, like a kind of a. a how should I say? It's not those uh, aroma that stays low and uh, uh, attached to the liquor. It's right. kind of a floaty, um, airy. Kind of yeah, kind of yeah. airy is better. Floaty is these are not quite. This is a pretty special tea. High, and that's why it's so aroma. hard to describe. It's really something else, right? Right, and also the way we describe uh, uh, floor like uh, aroma is a lot of times not just what's the elements in it, but the what's the profile of the aroma or taste. Right. Right. The second one is strong taste, which is uh, not strong because uh, it talk about rich, right? We talked about this uh, uh, a while ago. Talk about uh, uh, rich doesn't mean it's a strong. It mm. can be. Uh, because strong is more like intensity. Yeah, you can very much so. I feel dial like... that in with your brew, mm. but uh, the richness comes from the the property of the tea, the the mm. nature of the tea itself, mm -hmm. right? So that's the uh, what talking about in the second brew. The characteristic, uh, the feature of a second brew is rich in flavor. Mm -hmm. Third and fourth infusions still have that elegant. Aroma lingering, long lingering aroma. Yeah, mm. but it's not a, a certain point. It's not it has to be third and fourth. So what about the fifth infusion? It just means it's quite lingering. This is kind of yeah the profile. Mm. I just wanted to point out as well like this is if you're just getting into Chinese tea and as we've gone over these teas, you're going to notice this again and again. But with Chinese tea. From a Chinese perspective, there's very little how we describe the corn aroma on the tea. Mm -hmm. There's very little of that. Maybe one or two words, and then it's on to these other properties like mm -hmm. those elusive things to describe, like the airiness and the how the fragrance plays on the nose more than what does it smell like? Does it smell like a coconut? Does it smell like a blueberry? Mm -hmm. It's more like what is the uh, essence of the aroma? What is the essence of the flavor and the mouthfeel? Mm -hmm. um, so you'll notice that's kind of a theme in Chinese tea. Right. Okay. Shall we look at the? Yeah, let's have a look. Cause Cindy mm. just got here. Hey, Cindy. Hello. Church has in. <laughs> talks as long as I think I'll be here. So right. That's the, perfect. The pastor held her up a little bit. That's okay. You got to do your right thing. And uh, looks like Bruna is here. So hello to you. And what's? Oh, she's brewing up Taiping Hong Kui right now. That's awesome. Oh, that's cool. But uh, what I have is not very. Oh. We don't have Hokue at the moment. Not at the moment. We carried a Hokue a couple of years mm. ago. 
We had a top grade、uh, hokui, which we were talking about the leaf. That was his impression.、Oh, it was so beautiful,、mm. so like really stunning. And、uh, I think that was a supreme tea, right? Yes. That was really, really something else. And Josh、uh, absolutely loved those kind of mini advice pieces in Chinese tea culture. And I think it's so cool how they're all expressed in kind of poetry or lyric. Yeah. Yes. It's su- I love those. I'm glad you guys like those too. They're really、uh, fun. Do they help you remember too? Like give you a little. Oh yeah, absolutely.、Mm. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's、uh, always like that. Little poems, less、uh, little sayings. When they rhyme, it's easier to remember, right? Just how that works. Oh, <laughs> Cindy, looking for brewing tips for the Hokui as well. She got here late.、And、right. Oh, the brewing tips, the lens of a brewing time you use for hokui. Do we have a video? I don't think we have a video on、I、how to brew hokui.、So. Nope. We're gonna do a simple, not simple, a, a single video for hokui. Okay, stay、cool. tuned for that. For, right. Because I think it's a quite、uh, out of the normal understanding with because it's a shape、right. with the、uh, green、right. tea. Yeah.、Um, How many grams approximately? Usually, we still suggest the three grams, ish, to start、mm-hmm. with a tum- tumbler and、um, adjust. That might be a surprise for her, right? I'm not sure, but let、mm-hmm. us know. But yes, maybe th- put them in a tumbler and do that sort of more Chinese style. Yes,、mm-hmm. tumbler. All right, let us know how it goes. I'm gonna head over to. I got a picture up here from the Ho Kui section. Just a little shot of the.、Mm-hmm. Hokui leaf and the liquor,、mm-hmm. and then we'll head on to Xinyang Mao Jian. Thank you, Xinyang Mao Jian. It's better if she says it. You'll get the right tones and everything. If I say it, you get the English version, which I guess is okay too. Easier to remember. Xinyang Mao Jian can be picked in three seasons: spring, summer, autumn. Tea in spring is aquamarine, bitter than sweet. It is better to be picked before grain rain. Tea in summer is bitter and black. Picked after white dew is called autumn tea. It has distinct flavor, precious but less production. Spring tea and summer tea are the top grades. There is a folk tale that the early tea for friends and late tea for parents, which express the sincere and filial piety of people in tea country. I love the ending. It's so cute. The filial nature of people in tea country. Filial、okay. piety. What does that mean? Filial piety. I'm not even sure. I think it's like their dedication to、uh, their soulful dedication, kind of. I'm not sure.、Mm. I'm really piety is like、um, holiness, their or reverence. Oh. And filial, I believe, is loyalty. So、right. anyway, I'm gonna go back to the top. Anyway. And we'll go over. <laughs> so what I get here is it's picked in spring, summer, and autumn. Um, with some of the description, I think the first sentence was pretty good. Better to be picked before grain rain, which I believe is for. I think it's again another. It's a solely lunar Chinese term.、Mm-hmm. I prefer to keep those in Pinyin as well. It's Gu Yu, I think. Gu Yu, yeah. If, if I didn't mess that up, so sort of end April, early May is no, the, no. Gu Yu is the twentieth、oh, of April. End April, early May. Yeah, it's a it's a period, right? Oh right, right. So right. I think、okay. that does exactly what I said. I didn't、okay, want to、okay. get into the. We、well, uh, usually use the date、right. as the time mark. That's a little weird. Be- so you use the start date of Gu Yu.、Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So because when I looked it up, I found it's a period as well as、yes. and the date, the beginning day is the sort of marker. Okay. Yeah,、so. but here is the thing. He said before Gu Yu, which means before that whole slot, which means before, before the, the beginning, yeah. The, Beginning of the day, which means is before the April, the late April, April twenty second or whatever.、Yeah. Mm. Got you. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. So, and these terms you'll see them a lot. I'm just going to highlight it, but you'll see these kind of terms in Chinese tea a lot, and not just grain rain, but there's、mm. other dates that are important vis-a-vis tea plucking. Right. So th- here's an interesting part here. Summer tea, summer tea is bitter. Okay, we can handle that. And black.、Mm-hmm. I I I don't know now because the The leaf, like I feel like the liquor is black, but I'm pretty sure it's not. So it must be the the leaf is dark, I guess. Not really sure, but it sounds it sounds not good.、Mm-hmm. Uh, it's bitter and black, okay.、Mm-hmm. But then later I find out it's in the top grade with spring. So that was a little zigzag for my brain, right there.、Um, autumn tea is plucked. So I'm just gonna go back because here's another term: white dew. 
so this is a little bit backwards for English. Picked after white dew is called. So autumn tea is picked after white dew, which is sort of uh, early-ish September, right? 8 mm-hmm. September this year. Mm-hmm. So it's another term. It's a bailu, right? Mm-hmm. I think you just said it. So another good solely lunar term. And then there, we have a folktale, which is super fun. I love these little folktales. Early tea for friends, late tea for parents. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not sure what it means. Like, again, I see the filial piety. I guess it just expressed those people's character. Uh, I got to move Okay, on. start over. over from yeah, the beginning. Okay, the beginning. so... Um, so this tea CM Mojian plug in three seasons, right? Spring, summer, and autumn. Mm-hmm. And the uh, spring one, based on what it's saying here, it's um, so this tea itself has a little uh, bitter element in that, but okay. it ends sweet. So that's what it means. It means right. bitter, then sweet, that's in your mouth. And it says aquamarine. You know that color? Yeah, it's like a blue green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a strange one for tea, though. I usually think of like tropical water when I think of that color. So I... right. So basically, it's a kind of a green, a shade of a green, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? With Let's a little bluish it. thing. Is. Yeah, it's no. still. No. You you wouldn't Lost be able picture. to show mm-hmm. uh, see that in those pictures. Mm. Uh, and it's better to pick uh, before uh, late April, and the summer tea is. Uh, it's not bitter, it's astringent. It has ah. more astringent. And the color of the dry leaf is a little bit to the darker side. It has almost okay. a you know, hint of a black or dark might be more right. close to what it meant. Right. But right. in Chinese, it, what it says is the color is black. The color has black color. In okay. it. But what in the real tea means, it has a darker shade. Right. Basically. And then it talks about uh, the Bai Lu, which is another solar term we just mentioned. Oops, sorry about that. And um, that's the autumn tea. Okay, after that day, you start to pick uh, autumn teas. And autumn teas are considered really good because they're unique in taste and the yield is really low. So it's a kind of a rare, rare okay. tea. Right. That, mm. it, I, uh, that's the impression I got too, yes. like that it's rare and, some, and precious. And then the next sentence, again, like I said, pretty, yes. pretty much zigzag. Because it's a straight up wrong. Ah, okay. In Chinese, it's, it's a spring and autumn one. Somehow here got a, I think it's oh, a mistake. The, yeah, it's a mistake it's that wasn't corrected. Spring and autumn are yes, the top spring grades. and autumn. Oh, there we go. That explains everything. Are the everything. top grades. Right. Then the last one, again, is another little quote, uh, you know, that uh, the spring, so early tea means a spring tea. You save to give your friends as a gift, and uh, the late tea, what it refers to, the autumn, autumn tea right. that you save to, for your parents, for you know gratitude. Gratitude, yeah. And gratitude, so, and it's yeah. the slightly more precious one, right? You yes. save the best for the important people. I guess yes. is the thought. That's sort of the filial piet, pious, pious yeah. like. It's the, just a Chinese culture. Yeah, do the right thing. thing right? Yeah, do the right thing. <laughs> do the right thing. Okay, so that's so. This whole zigzag that I experienced was literally just a mistake. That was just it actually, because of one once mistake. Once you say this is autumn, now it all makes falls sense. into place. Right. right on, right on. So let's head over and see if we got any questions. So Josh here. explained that a filial piety is from the Latin for child and kind of devotion. So it's the devotion of child to their parents, kind of. Thing. Right. Okay. Very, so that kind of like is yeah, right. It's just I didn't yeah. know what that meant. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Good to know. But he qualifies it if he's not mistaken with a winky with a winky tongue. He's usually pretty bad on pretty bad on those on. things. He's googling like crazy while we go. <laughs> and like we said, the color on the book is not all that reliable. Not to mention it's also scanned and then going across the mm. airwaves back at you. So lots of degradation there. But yes, yeah. something to look at. And also, uh, um, you know, tea colors, the, the, the description green is white, right? Shades of green. There are really so many white, shades yeah. of gray. You have to, at a certain point, compare each other to see which color. You cannot just, uh, you know, like, because yeah. in the book, it's quite vague. Oh, this is bright green. Oh, this is dark green. But there mm-hmm. are still many shades. And not even to... within the same tea, there are so many grays. Right. And not to mention Chinese has so many words just for the color green. 
All right, Lucian Clouds. Got my notes. Okay, Lushan Clouds is produced in Lushan Mountains of Jiangxi Province. Lushan Mountains mountain at an altitude of 1,000 meters and more. Perennial misty, so this tea has a high mountain tea charms. It was said that the famous monk Hui Yuan had hospitalityed Tao Yuanming with this tea. The six unique features of Yushan Clouds are it is in a strong and clear shape, verdant and more tips, clear and bright soup, even leaves, durable fragrance, sweet and mellow. All right. So my first thought about this is, again, this one is pretty, I think we mentioned this again in previous episodes. It's produced, Lucian Clouds is produced in Lucian Mountain. But I think we can, I kind of guess that this is actually produced in the Lushan Mountains. It seems like it's more of a range based on the next little bit that points out that they're at an altitude of a thousand meters and more. So it's not a single mountain. There's a bunch of them, most, a lot of them over a thousand meters. So produced in these perennially misty, right? They, which they point out, which is something you really have to see. It's just like those ink paintings that you see of Chinese landscape. It's mountainy in a way that uh, as a North American who's seen the Rockies and the Plains and the Appalachians is really unique and hard to describe these not so towering mountains, but the density of these mountains with the mist floating around them high enough to poke into the clouds a little bit, some under mm. super beautiful. It's super beautiful. Yeah. Um, Anyway, back to the translation. That's the wording got me a little bit uh, romantic sizing. No, it's that. indeed like when you are, mm. uh, if you go there on those mountains, you got to, uh, if you like paintings and stuff, you mm. notice the fundamental, uh, uh, not philosophy, the theories about painting between East and West and widely different. And you look at those uh, Chinese paintings of mountains mm. is uh, uh, minimalistic, but it gave that feeling. But once you are in those mountains, you can see why we end up like that. Because our mountains was like it. Mm. You see so many mountains and so misty and stuff. Just beautiful. Right. Okay, so the... Um, and then there's this little anecdote about the famous monk, uh, Hui Yuan, who hospitalityed Tao Yuan Ming, which I think simply means he sort of hosted him and greeted him with tea, this tea. The, the <laughs> At first, we clouds. thought it was a hospitalized. Uh, when I first read it, I thought it was a Kung Fu anecdote that he hospitalized him because he tried to steal his tea or something. Uh, no, he, he was just being nice. The guys just did, So one of them is a monk and one is a poet. So I don't think there's going to be any hand to hand combat there. Right. Let's just finish the first. Uh, sure. Mm. Paragraph. Yeah. So uh, as you mentioned, Lushan is a little mountain range over there. And uh, the second says uh, the talking about this mountain at an altitude of a thousand meter and more. What it meant is the gardens, Lushan Yunwu uh, gardens are located above a thousand meters. Mm. So it's talking, not talking about the mountain itself. It was talking about the tea gardens oh, on right. Lushan. Right. Uh, Oh, right. And I also, sometimes people translate Lushan Yunwu as a Lushan cloud and mist or some, some tea who like mm -hmm. to translate as a cloud and mist. Usually the Chinese are Yunwu. And um, the last one talking about, so the famous monk, it was a Hui Yuan, Hui Yuan and the famous uh, poet, poet, poet. poet is uh, Tao Yuanming. Both are... Um, historical historical figures mm. Mm. okay so then in the um the, so the second para that's good for mm -hmm. the first para second mm -hmm. para the six features so this is basically covering these six features of lucian cloud and i Tough think part is coming <laughs> right the um but and i think they're all here but it was hard for me to like as a as a westerner like as soon as you tell me there's the six unique features i want to try and pull them out so, mm. and I, it was a little bit hard, but I think it's a strong and clear shape, which is again, um, how did I look at that? I, I said it's strong, unique shape. I think that's what they mean. I don't know for sure. I have to kind of guess at each one of them. Verdant and more tips. So that means pretty green, verdant, green and full of buds, I think. 
Clear and bright soup, that's pretty great. That just is a characteristic of soup that I understand. We always look for that in a great Chinese tea. Um, and even leaves with durable fragrance and sweet mellow flavor. I think that just even leaves is just sort of the, I don't know, I have to admit, I've sort of started to fall apart. Even leaves, probably consistent shape and color. I don't know what they really mean there. Uh, durable, an enduring fragrance, probably it doesn't go away quickly. It lasts, mm -hmm. lingering fragrance. Mm -hmm. And that sweet mellow flavor we look for in a classy, delicious green tea. Not booming, not punching in the face, but distinguished. That's mm -hmm. my take. Oh, this, you, you're bang on. Like based on what you read and on, <laughs> and uh, to understand this, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm just gonna go through all of those again mm. from the very Chinese translation with a little bit of wordy explanation as usual. So no, it's if really you helpful, are, actually. you know, into more into Chinese teeth, here are six, six. Do you guys do that? Six. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Do we Sorry. generally do that for six? Let us know. That's like hang ten. Ten? Hang ten. It's a surfer. Oh, oh, oh. Hang ten, dude. Oh, okay. okay. I'm not a surfer. If I'm wrong, correct me or don't because okay. I don't really. Tell me if you guys use a single hand to do number, single hand to do number one to ten. Okay? Mm. Because he said he never heard of it. We have a system to do one to ten. And with one hand. With one hand, yes. And my theory is because they're eating something with the other hand, they have to be able to do that with one hand. <laughs> China, they love snacks. She loves to snack. So I think the whole culture developed that. So they could <laughs> snack and tell you how many snack they had. <laughs> okay. Makes sense. Kind of. Okay. So those are six uh, uh, features, okay? They are in Chinese tea term. All four character, if you can come here. Like oh, let's do it. Four character. Oh, they're all really here. Yeah. One, two, three, three four. four. That's a character one, a feature, That's one. feature one. That's feature, feature two. two. Okay, just this, uh, just three. a little thing, so you know it's not. Um, because the English kind of lose those size. Oh, so cool. No, right. we, not, not kind of. 100% totally lost. Again, it's another little, maybe not poetry, that might be strong, but yeah, a little... Yeah, it's not quite poetry, but it's, but it's that kind of a It has structure. the rhythm of four character descriptor. Yes. Mm. Okay, first one is the shape. Tiao suo qing zhuang. That's a T term. Uh, right. Tiao suo is, is a T term that whenever you see it, that means the shape of the dry leaf. Qing zhuang. Again, <laughs> very hard to translate. It's a sturdy, but it's also quite, um, not slim, but you know, like a fit and sturdy kind of feeling. Okay, okay. Okay, second one is talking about color. Qin cui duo hao means it's a bright green with a lot of fuzz. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. So verdant and more tips, not more, more tips, really? fuzz. Fuzz, okay. fuzz, fuzz, right? Yeah, the, mm. tea, the, the silver fuzz, like the bai hao, uh, mm -hmm. that's what we talk about. Hao. Mm. Yeah. Hao. Uh, tang se ming liang, the third one talk about liquor uh, or soup, because in Chinese we call tea liquor or uh, tea soup. soup. Tea soup, Cha tang, yeah. okay. Tang se ming liang means bright. So the liquor is bright. Mm. Number four is talking about Brewed leaf, ye hao jun yun means the brew leaf looks pretty and uniform, kind of a kind of a similar ish in shape. Mm -hmm. It's not a one is buzz, one is stain right, kind of situation. Right. The fifth is talking about uh, aroma. It's rich and long lasting. Xiang yu chi jiu. Xiang yu. Okay. Okay. And the last one is talking about the taste. Uh, the Chinese way, which doesn't tell you which element is in it, is the chun hou wei gan. The first two character is more about mouthfeel. Chun means it's very chun hou means it's very thick, mellow, but really deep in like a nice aged wine or stuff. It's not just alcohol hit right away. It's really deep and. Oh, you can feel the thickness of the the body okay. of the liquor, kind of thing. Wei gan means it's a sweet. Right. Yeah. Right. Again, those really, 
we're not looking at flavor notes here. We're looking really at uh, real visceral sensations and characteristics yes. in the mouth. It's very, it's a very interesting perspective on tea, and I think one that is uh, that I that I aspire to kind of get better at identifying and delineating. It's really, um, it's just fascinating. Absolutely. Oh, I love those. Yes. Wow, it's those a... were really. I have to say, like I'm. You were very generous that I got it. I, I did, they did an okay no, job. Your, but your base is the paragraph. Right. So really based hard on that, though, you to got explain a those, lot. I can yes. see the, 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 the challenge of getting those across. Those are really... Yeah, um, and if you're not a tea person, you look at that, you were like... Oh, right. It, prob it would be just like a, you guess that based on English. Because right. they can base that, uh, guess that based on Chinese, right. but right. they don't know exactly what it's about. Right. right. Wow. Okay, let's uh, yeah, look at the uh, Okay, so... Oh, Natasha is here. Hello, Natasha. Hello, Natasha. Just saw your big hello. <laughs> I actually knew that one. Oh, I missed that. I don't know. Video. Oh, Pyre. yeah, yeah, nice. Told Go you, on. he's very knowledgeable. Oh, good. Yeah, you're right. Sorry to make you sound like just a, a rampant Googler. <laughs> <laughs> So this makes me not only want to drink this tea, but also travel to the mountains. Mm, mm. Yeah, I know. I was feeling the exact same thing and really excited to travel again someday, maybe. I don't know. <sighs> Door. <laughs> he said he Googled it now and uh, just now after and uh, found oh. his Confucius and Taoist value. Mm. It's a pretty, yes, it's mm. a really deep into Chinese culture, kind mm. of where ancestors and parents and, right, uh, right. you know, older generations. And the link of tea with those things is pretty interesting too, mm. right? So not a big shocker there. Right. Dora Iman, never heard, heard of it. Of I am British. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure what we were talking about at that time. Yeah. Do most Chinese people know this stuff or only people that are into tea? Yeah, I just jumped oh, yeah. ahead to her other okay. question just right, to right. see. And yeah, I think we were kind of mentioned that, but it's, it is most, well, maybe it's, you should answer. I'm kind right. of... No, 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 you're right. Because uh, we uh, kind of uh, throughout the book, we have been saying mm. when it comes to teachers, not, uh, not every Chinese would know that. Of course, yeah. Uh, they could guess some based on the character or words meaning, but it could be off. And that's one of the reasons the translation of this book is off, is uh, we can tell the, in, uh, the translator isn't a T person. So a lot of the translation mm. were based on just like uh, uh, language knowledge. So mm. I would say like a, mm. a T to Chinese people is like a Shakespeare to Maybe English people. I hope yeah. it's not offensive or anything. No, it's not offensive. And uh, I think it's a great one because there are people who can tell you, like, if they're those English literature buffs or a Shakespeare right, expert, right. they will know all the subtleties, all the little things. Yes. But if you're just an English speaker like me, you right. can just say, oh, that sounds like Shakespeare. And it's but fun. you also learn that in school, which yes. is what I mean. is right. It has a pretty good base. Like a, a lot of Chinese know Very something good. about Chinese. Really tea. good metaphor. But to talk about a deeper level, a more mm. professional mm. level, is not everybody would, especially when it comes to tea turns, not every Chinese or everybody who can speak Chinese yeah. would know. Yeah, and I want to take a second and mention that the, like, the book is written by Jian Li. Jian Li speaks... English a little bit better than I speak Mandarin. Really? I don't know. We're about the same, <laughs> let's say, at best, which is pretty rough, okay? Very rough. But they can communicate. We communicate. We have our ways with technology and hand waving. But I want to just point out the real purpose of the comment is to right. point out with a tea person here, Jen, great English speaker, deep knowledge of tea. This is a precious resource for us, for me. This is why we do this, because I wanted to share this kind of knowledge with you guys. So you can't toot your own horn so hard, but I'm going to do it straight up and say, <laughs> you're able to read these terms and understand, oh, I see what's mixed up. This is right, the right, thing. Right. So that's a great question, uh, Dora, Dora Iman. Cindy says, we use two hands to show numbers over five. Yeah, like seven. Let me show you this, okay? Yeah, yeah, do it for It's fun. pretty, uh, I don't know if Here it's Here we go, one you to ten. Not know, okay? There will one, be a quiz. two, three, Ooh. four, Five. I guess one to five, how many finger you show were this. I mm -hmm. guess it all works. Okay, from this six. This is a little bit interesting. We're going to do that. Oh, I do that. It subtle. could be different even between sure. Chinese, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. like a North. But or... six to ten are the fun okay, ones. Okay, okay. Six. This is pretty universal. Six. Uh, North people do seven like this. 
Okay. Where I grow up, we do seven like this. Which is way cooler, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and、uh, we do right eight like this,、mm-hmm. and nine. We don't have ten. Ten、oh. and zero is almost like that, right? Okay. Oh, okay. Some people do ten as a, a, a fist, fist.、Mm-hmm. and zero is a like is zero. Yes. Perfect.、Um, handy, <laughs> handy tea knowledge for you today. <laughs> No, you can communicate numbers from really far, like、mm-hmm. how we shop in Costco. So many people, right, and you can、right. say this is six dollars. Right, right. <laughs> oh, okay, and Josh says, "Goodness, how I finally given in and made some hokwe." Good call. Good call. Nice, nice. All right. Well, you're late though, because now we're on to. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Now we're on to. He、I、always think... likes to tease you. Yes. Yeah.、I'm, I hope. I hope. I hope you enjoy that. So now we're on to. I forgot my sound effects for the transition. On to, oh, my book is not cooperating. Oh right. On to Wu Yuan Ming Mei. I didn't miss any, right? Let me scroll down a bit so you can all read that. Wu Yuan Ming Mei is a kind of green tea. The Wu Yuan requires strictly with fresh leaves picking standard,、uh, with, with strictly with fresh leaves picking standard for stretching earlier a bud leaf. Picking the white tips appeared thick, even, tender, and without pet leaves instead of purple leaves with buds. It requires to pick after fog released in sunny days to keep the surface dry. While picking, dry. While picking, avoid nails pinching in case that hurts the pedicle. Okay, I spent I spent some time with this. Read it a few times. And in the end, the other ones I thought, okay, I can do a pretty decent job with them.、Um, this one looks really interesting. It looks like there's so much good stuff in here, but I ended up having to guess everything. I think it's made with fresh leaves. Okay, made with fresh leaves.、Um, to pluck earlier, if you pluck it too early, you get one bud, one leaf. I think that that's what it's saying. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm wrong, but. But、mm. like it's just a it, it's a bit of a train wreck this one I have to say. You know what? Since it's a, such a train wreck, maybe, maybe just come back to the、yeah. real thing. Let me just yeah, let's do that.、Right. So, Wu Yuan Ming Mei, it's a tea. Yeah,、it's、I felt like the first、tea. sentence was unnecessary. We're in the green tea section. I'm sort of like, yeah, we know. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a, means it's a kind of a high grade green tea. In、uh-huh. Chinese, yes. So Wu Yuan is in Jiangxi Province. It's a very, very beautiful place, very stunning, and old times very poor. That's why they have、mm. really awesome environment. Zero pollution kind of thing. Yeah, it was extremely、mm. poor,、uh, so zero pollution kind of thing. So they,、okay. I think Wu Yuan. Is the first tea, first Chinese green tea that passed the WTO or WHO, some kind of a、oh. international recognition with zero pollution, like zero、right. of everything. Right. And that was really early when that concept came out. Now there's more places that yeah, they had that to, participate. They had to work at yeah, it too. Yeah, they were this, so poor、right. at a certain point. There's no local industry to support, so they try、right. to figure something out. Basically, pristine natural environment is what we're talking mm, about.、Mm. And nowadays, they have a beautiful fields of. Oh, next trip.、Uh, what、You're、is that called?、Here. Yellow flowers. Mm. Mm, the, you know, you use a、uh, canola? canola, similar、mm. but Chinese canola. Okay. So it, we talk about those different oils,、mm. slightly different flavors,、right. uh, but that fields of that、uh, yellow flower. So、beautiful. people go there for photo shoots in the when it's the season.、Mm-hmm. And it's whole anyway. <laughs> back to the paragraph.、Um, so here it says for stretching earlier. I was so I was like confused when talking about why stretching. Then I realized, okay, it's a Teacher coming up. Ah.、Uh, 一牙一叶出展 Okay, it's here. Let me let me、okay. just grab it. Where is it down here? Here. Yeah. Ah,、uh, 一 yeah. 一牙一叶一叶 Okay, the one stretching one is talking about the 出展 That's a T term. Right here. Means、mm. one bud, one leaf, with the leaf barely open, so just open. So you、oh, know how、oh. plant one leaf, one bud, uh, one bud. Sorry, one bud, one leaf, right? If 
leaf comes from bud, right? Mm -hmm. It was one bud, and they open a little bit, one bud, one leaf, right? right. Open a little bit, more obvious. Then right. open more, there's more leaf coming up. So right. kind of like something like so that. So you want to, basically, it's almost hard to distinguish between the bud and the leaf. Yes. The leaf's just releasing off the bud. It's uh, telling you in mm. terms of the time about the one bud, one leaf. Mm. So slightly earlier than standard one bud, one leaf. Right. And then with a fuzz, white fuzz. Oh, right? that's the earlier part. Earlier. That like a really, yeah, okay. Let's right. not go to the English too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then, in, then you talk about how they has a white fuzz and the, uh, the leaf and the buds are uh, strong and sturdy. And okay. uh, the size are quite uniform. Every piece of the tea, the size is quite uniform mm. and the tenderness is quite uniform. It seems like a lot of tea has this, I'm not, I don't know about all, but many of them seem to have this uniformity you want to have. And I guess that just means because the plucking standard and the processing were both done carefully enough to retain similar size and shape. If they're all those right bud and leaf, it seems like a good quality in tea. Yes. Mm. In general, yes. First mm -hmm. is a plucking. When you have the similar sizes, mm. it's easier for processing. Oh, yeah. Easier to have sense. a good uh, result. Then it also tell you about the processing with care or smash it up. Right. So right. makes yeah. sense. And talking about no pests because it's kind of early. Pet leaves? What? Are, you better... I don't know. I okay. really don't know. Okay. Without pet leaves, I think it is not pets. It's pests. Oh I yes. That's Every probably... now and then they miss That's one letter or stuff. Yes, yes. It, it means not not bitten and yeah. If those of you who are following along in the translation, you'll notice that it's yeah. It's not a damaged leaf by pests or other things. Yes. Without damage. Yes. Oh. That pet leaves. I was wor I was like, is that the leaf that's from last spring? Is the, <laughs> I was thinking because know? there was a fish leaf before. Now you think this is a dog yeah, leaf. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so if you were in last week, we talk about the fish leaf, which is the a bad translation of mm. that. Anyway, we won't go back. Check out that episode to see what that. You'll understand why pet leaf threw me for a curveball big time. Right. And uh, Hi, yo. and when plugs, you don't want the purple leaves or buds uh, this might be something weird for people uh, with the tea plants you have some tea mm. plants that are just purple like you heard of probably purple tea mm -hmm. right it's not talking about rather than green tea white tea tea process this purple tea is talking about the tea plants mm. that are uh, purple mm -hmm. but for regular tea plant no matter what cultivar every now and then you still have a little not quite mutant just early spring signal that they are purple that's why lu you mm. think purple is good what does that mean purple mean right. that only appears in early times right there is summer ones that is really rare unless this plant itself is mutant do you call that mutant yeah, like it's a, it's kind of a, a it's branched off. Onto yeah, its you own know, it's, thing. it's, it's yeah. a little bit off. Yeah. Everything has that. So, um, mm. so this tea doesn't want that purple buds. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, it means color is quite uniform. You don't want a right. deeper color because of the purple. Once you've made, it's not like a purple. It's like going to be darker than the other darker buds. green, something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. right? And it plugs after any moisture in the on the leaves like dew or fog you need a sunny day yeah this one i was able to cheat on because of being there you see how the mornings are yeah even Almost, sunny days start with the fog all right days. you wake up and the mist is gorgeous laid over these mountains but everything's wet everything is wet but that you can feel the sun burning they're through. the finest makeup spray on your face <laughs> <laughs> anyway you can feel the sun burning through and then eventually it's dry and then boom the fields are full of people mm. <laughs> And then uh, when plug and uh, it wasn't, uh, uh, they cannot be plugged with the nails, like a pinch it, uh, like a cut it, it will make the end really red. You have to cut, mm -hmm. like pick it like a- Firmly hold and doop. Yes. The way, because it how it breaks is how the fiber naturally breaks. Right. At its normal weak point. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. That's it for today's tea. We went through four teas. Yes, today. four teas. And I guess it's interesting too. We start with the super famous ones and work our way to the little bit lesser known ones. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
it's uh, still quite famous in terms mm -hmm. of a green tea. It's just sure. uh, less, maybe less known here because they're in weird locations. Xinyang Mao Jian is from Yunnan province, uh, Yunnan, <laughs> Henan province, sorry, Henan province, right? Taiping Houhui from Anhui province, mm. Lushan Yunwu from Shan, uh, Jiangxi province, and uh, Wu Yuan Mingmei from Jiangxi province. Okay, yeah. just wanna... Yeah, no, that's good to know. That's good to know. Because I felt like they didn't mention that. They did, Anyways, they, some they did, some they didn't mm. in the text. It really was hit and miss. Right. Uh, Josh gave me the okay. Thank you, Josh. He said it's okay if I do the little little mini teas, mm. the gentle teas, just makes for a jovial atmosphere. That's what I'm going for. So I'm glad I'm not getting on getting on your nerves. Talking about Tai Zi Yu. Yes. Yes. You got to tell I can't believe what that is now. I can't believe you know that Tai Zi Yu. Yes. Uh, it's a uh, it look really similar to canola oil in the mm. flower, but the taste is different. Right. It could be how the process is different. I couldn't get any here in Canada. Right, right, right. That's I that wasn't looking yellow for that. flower that fills the fields mm. that and we were that speaking. And that oil is really yellow. When you like oh. stir fry or stuff, you will Almost see yellow oil. Almost yellow warren, that yellow fluorescent yeah. yellow oil. Like usually, mm. you, if you do things with oil, it wouldn't see the oil color. Right, but right. that one actually shows. It stays. Mm. Cool. For years and with no luck. Same here. Yeah. For All right, we'll stay in touch. If we find it, you'll be the first to know. You find it, mm. please let us know right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. That is uh, elusive to, indeed. The tai de yo, the oil. It's cooking oil, guys. So for those of you who are maybe we got lost, like what are they talking about? It's not tea stuff. We're we're also big foodies, so we love to cook and make good food, and the oil, you know, is the base right. of that. So Cindy says, I'm so glad the session was early in the day as our electricity is going to Ooh. be turned off later today and not coming back for three days because of high winds. Oh, they want to avoid fires. Right. That seems smart. I oh that I'm Ooh. Actually I was gonna say I never heard of that, but there's another friend of ours on Instagram who mentioned that the electricity goes off just when the wind gets high. California. I think, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, Cindy's also sure, in, in yeah, California. Yeah. So yeah. that's such a weird, we don't have that here. We never have, oh, we have to pre preemptively turn off your electricity to avoid forest fires. Thank heavens. I hope everything goes well and I hope you get your electricity back. Mm. I'm sure you'd, I guess in that context, maybe you don't mind as much since they prevent a smoke filled sky and a burning situation. Right, right. Whoa. I always thought it was kind of raw or unprocessed canola oil. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know why, but they definitely doesn't taste the same or something like that. Mm. The, the, the Tai Zi Yu has a strong taste. Mm. Mm. And it could be that processing is quite different as well on top of the, the, the fundamental cultivar and the processing is kind of different. Mm. And Josh agreed. If he finds it, he's going to let us know. Okay, we'll definitely let you know too and we will keep our eyes open. Mm. All right, guys. Okay. That is... a uh, Okay, oh. so I was thinking this, okay, just mm. uh, since yeah. you guys are here and we're back to, we mentioned this before, we're back to stage two, uh, quarantine again because oh, Ottawa is getting a little bit bad a little bit hot in yeah in terms of the number of mm -hmm. COVID cases i hope you guys are doing fine i guess toronto yes. is also back yeah. phase two kind so of, um... it's very not likely so we're thinking of doing a little bit more live session because we had that COVID recipes and stuff not random stuff most right. of the stuff we upload our tea and yeah, food but a little bit of food and, and a little bit of health stuff mm -hmm. that's our our thing kind of so i was thinking of doing a little live on gua sha i don't know if anybody heard of it mm -hmm. or anybody interested or if you have so i'm thinking of doing some basic gua sha uh, basics if somebody is uh, the fans were thinking about uh, exploring it or sometimes you could see those uh, super expensive gua sha board Mm. Watch our board on you know the cosmetics website or stuff is right. that worth it or stuff like that and give people some ideas about uh, what it is so if you are interested yeah, yeah. Let in us that know if you're or interested. What, what, what's your I thought or that i think for those who are unsure what gua sha is i know because uh, I've, mm. I've experienced it but i think in english uh, maybe scrape therapy might be a scrape word I've heard. Therapy? i'm not okay. i'm not so sure myself because i don't uh, mm. You know, I don't know. I don't dig into those things in a deep way, but I'm, uh, I'm the, right, right. I'm so basically, patient. using something to scrape on your skin, and sometimes you can end up with this uh, red dots or Redness stuff like or that. Redness or purpleness. 
Right, and、mm. uh, it's a a recipe. It can be a home,、uh, like it's pretty it's a trendy. Home remedy, right? Home remedy, but、mm. it's also a, a a tool of a medical tool when using by you know proper doctors、mm. and nurses in Chinese medicine. But it's very handy if you have a little symptoms at home, and of course there's no severe medical issues, and you can use、yeah. that as daily, not daily, but regular, regular、uh, maintenance. And、uh, for it's mild, right? It's, for it's a, boost、yeah. the house or correct a little symptoms like a sore throat and、uh, stuff like that. Can I point out another really important、oh, okay. aspect of guasha、yeah. that I, that I think is going to help make people interested? Is I think it's good for toning a little bit. Is that wrong? I use that for toning. Is that just you, or I don't know? It works. What it, it works. does See, is you know circulation、important. and stuff. So we can talk about that.、Mm. Some aspects. If you are interested or you have any questions, and and I think nowadays is quite a quite a trendy in like、uh, skincare and、mm. stuff is that work or how does that work? I can explain a little bit more because I feel like they're kind of a. Milking this concept and selling people super expensive, right? Yes, you know, gua sha board in on Sephora, which is、or. probably one of the simplest things ever. Yes, so ah,、uh, so if you have any questions or you think it's an interesting topic,、yeah. just let us know in the comments so we、mm. can ah、uh, we we that's going to be your thing, but I'm going to back you up a hundred percent, and yeah, let us yeah. know, and you can contact us on Instagram or YouTube comments below. Yeah. All right, guys. So that is episode seventeen of Sunday Tea Book. Hope you enjoyed it. It was a great time for us. Please, if you like this kind of content and you find it helps you in learning about Chinese tea and selecting and everything, give us a thumbs up.、Mm -hmm. um, head on over to our website for the finished translation.、Uh, you can find all kinds of great green teas there. That's another great way to support the channel. Is treat yourself to some delicious teas from our website. Uh, the、yeah. tea we had is linked in the description below as well. Absolutely, so, Guizhou Steam Green Chinese Steam Green. Really interesting、um, tea experience, and very different from Japanese.、Taste. Very different. So if you if you love Japanese steamed green tea, it would be a really fun、uh, side by side.、Mm -hmm. You'll get a whole different dimension from this steamed tea, but you've still got that similarity in process. Really great、uh, to educate、mm. your palate. So guys, we will see you、uh, next week.、Uh, stay tuned, and until、Here's、next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.